Old man Woody likes the crooked cock. Let's not pretend that To Catch a Predator wasn't hilarious. Yes. Because you could tell as like... <clears throat> Chris Hansen took himself way too seriously with that. Like he would walk in and put on an affected reporter voice where he'd be like, have a seat right over there. Right over there. Would, the, would you like a cookie? Would you like a cookie there? My, now the problem with this yeah, is that good? you came here to rape a young boy. Uh, would you, would you deny that? I notice you have that uh, four pack of sea breeze in your hand <laughs> and then a bottle of vodka. Is is that okay? Like he was, yeah, he was totally faking. When he was on this show, that was kind of my issue with him. Like I was interested in Chris Hansen, the stories of the ups and downs, the careers, like the man who we got was what I'll refer to as Chris Hansen's representative, right? He didn't We got crap. NBC correspondent Chris Hansen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we got the, the character from the show who didn't break, who didn't talk about the rest of his life, what it's like to be famous. He didn't talk about anything. He didn't other... talk about weird little stories that happened tangentially to the right. running of the pedophiles. Like, he didn't tell funny yeah. things. It was like, dude, you realize you're trying to sell a show and... To be frank, this show you're on right now is a lot bigger than you're ever going to be on the internet. So why don't you try yeah. and sell it, bitch? Like, no, uh, it was. Uh, I'm I'm a Mister Upright. I'm Mister, you know, tight and clean. No, I, it sounds I, like his personal life is pretty fucked up, though. Like it you know, is. Reading yeah. what people say, he's got a bunch of like d weird debts and problems with his ex, his ex wives, or something he, like this. Have you he guys sent heard us. That? So we had this issue. I could be wrong about this. Oh, I got the cup still. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to say he had to cancel on us and, uh, and we had built it up like, Hey, Chris Hansen next week. And that taught us a lesson. Like we never like do that now, or, or at least yeah. I don't, I, I, yeah. I think, I, I think that's pretty true. We, 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 we try not pretty to much avoid that. If yeah. somebody's coming next week, Fowler we don't say anything. Cause we never know when, like, like, like I, we've known Anthony was going to be on tonight for about a month. We didn't say anything. Cause maybe something happens and Anthony doesn't come and everybody's let down, but Chris was going to come on <laughs> and he couldn't make it. What's that look, Taylor? What happened? I was joking because I, I said on stream like days ago. Oh, because people were like, is Anthony coming on? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're a real piece of shit. So <laughs> <laughs> people were already asking to cut out somehow. <laughs> so he uh, he had to cancel on yeah. us, I think. And to make it up to us, I thought it was pretty cool. He sent us these personalized coffee cups with his face on them. And it says something like PKA, have a seat right there. And uh, and we were all like, ah, oh, we were kind of miffed at you, but this huh. this eight dollar cup really uh, does solve cheap. everything. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, I, Honestly, I, it did. It was, yeah, it yeah. Was the, I had a real problem that, yeah. with my relationship with Chris Hansen until the coffee mug. At which point, it was all forgiven. <laughs> Turned out, he ordered like five thousand of those or something, and never paid the person who made them. Oh. I bet Taylor's yeah. getting his. I... Our cups are technically evidence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah, he never he paid the guy. Everybody? Yeah, he stiffs people, I guess. Um, and he's also had a few people kill themselves because of his show. Yeah. Now, you can, de you can debate that all you want. It might be like, one. Is it a few? It's at least two that I know. Okay. Uh, okay. One was like a local politician. I'm going to say he was 45 and another mm -hmm. was like a very young guy. Like he was like 18 to 22, somewhere in that general range. Yeah. And, uh, and I just remember, I think he came in wearing a cowboy hat or something like that. And, uh, and, and Chris was like, well, what's, you know, why don't you watch someone your own age? He's like, I'm ugly. And I'm a nerd. I think, and it was, I think it's a kind of common thing when someone gets caught for pedophilia to consider suicide as a way out. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I a mean, lot of because you know. there's not much coming back from that. It's it. it <laughs> you literally have to change your name and move to Alaska. Is it the worst social scene? It's the like, worst. Is it worse it's than the worst. murder? It's worse than rape. It's worse than murder because you, you hear somebody killed somebody and you're like, why? Sure. But if somebody says, oh yeah, he fucked. Uh, 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 let, let's talk about actual pedophilia because there's a definition. I'm not going to go into it, but fucking a 17 year old is not pedophilia. It's it's underage sex. But actual yeah. pedophilia is called somewhat, like a there's a term or something. Yeah, there's a term. Now when you're it. 17, it's not. That's like teenager, isn't it? Actually, 17 is legal uh, as long as yeah. you don't record anything. Yeah. But but you know what I'm saying? But it like very like a, one of those 15 year old girls that looks like an adult, right? Like, exactly. Yeah. That is not well, that's pedophilia. That's, that's, that's underage. Legal. <laughs> that's underage sex. And look, I'm not excusing having sex with a 15 year old when you're when you're a grown ass man. 
What I'm saying is that's not technically pedophilia. That doesn't mean it's not, it's even any less right or wrong. I'm just saying define it as what it is. Pedophilia is when you have this attraction toward children, actual children, like 10 years old, eight years old. Yeah, oh, even younger old. than that. I, I was watching this pedophile documentary. Old, you can fuck her. That's my motto, right? Like if you can, I, you can manage a conversation and listen to that shit for a half hour, have at it. I like that at the start was, of the was show, screaming. he wasn't even celibate. saying the C word. And now he's like, you know what? I think if you, if you can deal with a 15 year old. You can form a sentence. <laughs> No, she I, could suck a dick. <laughs> I, I was streaming a pedophile documentary because that's what I've been doing on my Twitch channel, streaming a bunch of weird ass conspiracy and, and serial killer documentaries. A lot of fun, by the way, Taylor Marker. And <laughs> the, <laughs> one of the pedophiles was asked by an interviewer during the show where they're like, So where's the uh where's the area, you know, where you're, you know, the kind of the age range that you're most attracted to? And this guy was like wearing a yellow turtleneck, being like, Well, the the ages I most find myself drawn to, I wouldn't use the word attracted. It's an energy, not a sexual mm. thing. Okay. I would say uh, between two and four. <clears throat> and it was like, you need to be killed. Yeah. You can't, you can't be going around attracted to two to four-year-olds. Well, different two and four-year-olds mature at that's different rates, we, Taylor. That's <laughs> something, that is something we cannot abide. You know, Brooke, what do you do with those people? Four, looked at least seven. <laughs> no, she was, uh, you know, the old saying, pussy goes rotten at five. Well, I say it. <laughs> well, it's something I've so weird. <laughs> it's, a, it's a literal Nambla documentary. I'm hoping it'll catch on. <laughs> and then this, I, yeah, that guy, he was, he went up to a kid in the middle of a parking lot. And ask the kid like, "And what's your birthday? And and what else can you tell me about yourself?" And then like him leaving that conversation where the kid's like, "Oh yeah, like April seventh, uh, uh, goodbye." Like leaving, he's like, "And I went up to Thomas, and he was so forward. He was so happy with. You would not believe the energy with which this child shared these details with me, and and he was flirtatious in a way huh. that you cannot understand. He Now I will say this. I like to be middle of the road on things. I like to like 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 This is not one of those issues. N doesn't apply here. <laughs> no, Thomas. No. <laughs> You sure? You I'm sure. sure. That, I'm sure. You, you sure that Thomas up. didn't have a little twinkle in his eye for this gentleman? <laughs> Maybe he had no. a little, uh, a little, uh, you know, sparkle of endearment. Who knows? Uh, maybe maybe he'd like it if uh, we maybe we zip these uh, these two sleeping bags together. Oh, and we can zip these sleeping bags together. And something happened with him that was so natural, so beautiful. Well, we was roasting Chris... marshmallows and one fell on his nether region. Dick doesn't and... know. This is a Nambla documentary with a pedophile talking about how he conscripted a 14-year-old boy to go on a camping trip. And this pedophile is saying it to a documentary. And the end of the documentary is literally just photos of these people and their name and where they live. For like oh. 10 seconds at a time where it's like, this is uh, fucking pedophile Steve Johnson and he lives in Maryland. And uh, this, this motherfucker said, he was like, and then Thomas, he came to me and he constructed a, a trip into the woods. And it was so wonderful, so wonderful to experience God's nature and plus, uh, you know, and, and his nature himself. And he invited me to zip our, our sleeping bags together. And that's what he did. And as we were laying there that night, he presented himself in a way that was so seductive and so natural to me. And I can say that things happened that evening and that there was no lubrication required. He's talking about raping a child in a tent in the middle of the woods in one zip together. Counterpoint. Counterpoint. When you were 14 year old, years old, Taylor, you were probably playing some hockey, right? Palling around with your friends. When I was fourteen, I was big enough to beat the shit out of that dude. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. If 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 that fellow taking you out in the woods, you'd have only presented yourself if you were actually interested. Oh, and of course, because that guy takes to mean presenting yourself as turning away from him in the night because you're afraid. <laughs> 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 ah, I ended on that note. I love that the word play. The best shit I've ever heard. <laughs>